Good morning, everyone, board members and, and uh, members uh, who tuned in online. Uh, we have no guest speakers scheduled for this morning. Uh, are there any uh, members uh, online who wish to exercise their right to speak? Christine, did anybody raise their hand? They hands? did not. Nobody no. has. Okay, we'll move on to the uh, minutes of our uh, regular meeting on Friday, December 11th, uh, starting on page one. Page two. Page three. And page four. If no one has any corrections, is there a motion to accept the minutes? I so move. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, the minutes of our special board meeting on December 17th to uh, uh, deal with the special assessment. Uh, this is page five. Are there any corrections? In the uh, uh, under the indebted paragraph, uh, the paragraph that starts Dr. Cornetta, I think uh, it was uh, the third line 568, 68% voted for, and 270. Uh, delete that percent there. Uh, in the next paragraph, Dr. Cornetta gave a special thank you to Mr. Shea, Ms. Cannon, Mr. Murphy, Mr. Collins, Ms. Anderson. And Mrs. Franick, uh, I think, and uh, it should be inserted, and all those who collaborated over the past several years to develop the plan. So uh, between uh, Mrs. Safranik and who put the, and all those. And the, the last uh, line of that paragraph, uh, payment plan and encourage members to vote for the ING. Um, Page six, there are no corrections. Uh, a motion to accept minutes. Second. Second. Second, okay. Discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, let's move on to the general manager's report. Okay, good morning everybody. And uh, just first and foremost, wanna give an update on the COVID cases that we are aware of in Foxfire right now. Um, at this point in time, there are currently four active cases that have been reported. Um, we did send out an email Wednesday and subsequent to that email, I did get um, two additional call, uh, calls or emails to uh, notify, notify the club. The spike in cases that we had observed just after the holidays, um, all of those members are, uh, are recovered and back to their normal uh, daily activities. So I think that's a great, a great uh, thing. Uh, as of right now, there are uh, zero employees with COVID and um, we obviously want to keep it that way. But uh, one of the things I did mention too, in one of the meetings that I attended virtually this week was that if you go online and listen to some of the webinars that NCH is putting on and some of the information that they provide on a weekly basis. Um, I find that their, mess their messages with regard to COVID are, are very positive. And um, they're, 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 they're talking a lot about the things that they're doing, the things that they're capable of and the number of cases. And um, as of this past Monday, I expect to see another update today, but as of this past Monday, um, there, the number of positive cases that have been tested at, at NCH, the percentage is approximately uh, nine, nine and a half percent, and that's over the last seven and 14 days. So, um, and as of Monday, they were actually treating 81 patients who were hospitalized with COVID. And the other thing that they had mentioned was that they had never run out of supplies or beds to treat those people in need. So. Um, I, I know for the last several months, we've all gotten listened to a lot of 
uh, very disturbing news, and it is disturbing. But um, I think we're in a good place in, in Naples, and NCH has really done a nice job of providing some great information and, and kind of a light at the end of the tunnel. The other thing I would mention as well is that you've probably seen on the local news that Publix will now start will will now um, be issuing vaccines as well. And what we'll do is we'll make sure that that link is up on our website at Foxfire Fire for everybody. So as John, far as our, yes. My uh, mom went over to Publix. She actually tried to get the vaccine from Publix and there's some challenges there. So before you post that website and I mean, if you want to make the information available, fine, but uh, they're, they're, they're not really quite ready to be rolling out vaccines from what she encountered. And she talked to the store manager. Right, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much what they've indicated is that right now, it's not something where you just be able to show up, but to, 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 to have our members, I think, directed to the proper websites and the proper resources. So as that information come, becomes available, for example, um, Last week, I, I don't remember exactly which day it was, but I was watching the news at five in the morning and it was the first that I had heard that NCH was releasing vaccines to the general public. And my guess is that 99% of the uh, greater community probably didn't know that just because of the time they're releasing this information. But yes, you're exactly right. There's, they're not prepared right now just to issue the vaccine like it's a flu shot. It's gonna take some time, but um, well, I, and their regi their registration process isn't working quite right. So just just so you're aware. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. The the um, with with regard to golf and social events, um, we are committed to keeping our attendance limited uh, in the clubhouse. We are requiring the the use of face masks whenever in the clubhouse. And for, for members, even if they're at their tables when they're not eating or drinking, we are requiring them to wear masks as well. It's just going to be um, one of those precautions that we want to have in place for the coming for the coming uh, weeks and months. But overall, the events have gone very well. They've gone very smoothly, with probably 90% of the dining um, occurring outdoors on a weekly basis, and. Um, we are limiting and, and, and adjusting basically on a weekly basis to make sure that we can do these things in the safest manner possible. Our projects, one of the outstanding, um, one of the outstanding items right now is our pool. And the only reason that's outstanding are two pretty fairly simple reasons. Number one, the windows for the bathrooms um, have been on order since mid July. And because of the, the, the delays in the supply chain and manufacturing, uh, that's, that has taken several months. And um, they are scheduled to be in Naples um, next week. I wouldn't hold my breath at this point in time just because we've got other shipment dates. However, as soon as they do come in, they will be installed immediately. But in the meantime, um, the windows, the trims of the windows were painted the current windows just to make the uh, pool uh, restrooms look, you know, a little bit nicer, neater. But overall, the um, the restrooms are substantially finished. And then, secondly, the other supply that we're waiting for is the um, the gates. They have to do a repair on the gates for entering entering the pool, and the fence company is well aware of that, and we'll get that resolved as soon as those new swing gates. Um, or, or parts come in. But other than that, everything at the pool is working really well. It's just those two items that we have to get closed out so we can close out our payment with HydroTech and our permit for the bathrooms or for the windows, I should say, with the county. Gonna take a breath, sorry. <laughs> the next thing I want to bring up was the access to the Richard King Greenway, which is runs parallel to King's Way. We've had this discussion many times um, in the Health and Wellness Committee and, and some various other committees and then some discussions at the board as well. And the idea is that we'd like to give our members access to the Greenway without leaving Foxfire. And it appears that we can put a entry 
behind in, in our fence uh, behind the pool area. And one of the reasons I think that this area would would be the best place to put an entrance would be a um, it's lit. B, we have security cameras over there. We're going to be upgrading anyways. So we can have a security camera that would actually be directed right at that entryway. And C, there's parking and, and a meeting place for members. So if they want to meet, we have parking across the street from the clubhouse if they want to access the Rich King Parkway. Um, so as, as a group, you know, in the future. So the, the reason I'm putting this on the agenda is today is just to get the overall feeling of the board as to whether we should start moving forward on this. I've talked to our fence um, company and their belief is that all we will need to do is pull a, a permit because that is our fence. The, fen the, the gate would be basically a four foot gate chain link that would have an automatic hinge and it would have a locking mechanism with the combination that only the members would know. So for access into Foxfire. So the um, the 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 overall project's gonna cost less than three thousand dollars. And it's something I that um, the uh, health and wellness committee has been very keen on that concept for some time. And at this point in time, I I feel comfortable moving forward because of where we are with the pool project and based on my last conversation with the fence company. I just wanted to get the overall feedback from the board as to should we start moving forward on this? Well, as liaison to the Health and Wellness Committee, I'd like to add that this adds an opportunity for walking, which uh, they are promoting as a healthy activity, something that you can do um, with uh, social distancing and remote and will uh, be much more uh, accessible to members without uh, disturbing uh, residents in that area. And with, there was concern about um, security and safety, but I think uh, you've addressed all of that. So uh, the Health and Wellness Committee is, uh, is behind this, as you said. So you don't, uh, you don't think we'll have any risk of kind of all the folks from Moon Lake coming into our master pool with the locking mechanism with the gate? just knowing that we've had problems with Foxmoor with people jumping fences and getting into the pool. And if we're putting the entrance at the pool, uh, you know, are we gonna have issues with our master pool with people getting in? I know you're gonna have security cameras, but it's back behind the building. And, uh, you know, we may be setting ourselves up for an issue with the pool. Uh, well, I'll say just from, from where we are right now, the way that the um, <clears throat> the way that the the drainage ditches is, is right now, and the way that fence is behind the pool, it would actually be very easy for you know people to scale the fence. We have an experienced um, kids and, and others jumping the fence and jump in the pool, so um, I, I don't think we would have any issues, uh, any 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 more issues than we would have in a regular basis. The only issues we've had at the pool in the past have really been. The um, I've really been if we, if there was a, a vagrant, you know, and, and they and they would, might go in the pool area. But now that we've got our fire uh, our fire uh, permit, we can actually put locks back on the entrances that can be locked at night for the pool gate itself. So you have you kind of have double security. You have the fence, and then you have the the, the pool access itself. Those fences will be locked as well in the evening. Well, the other the other option you might want to think about is. Uh, if you find that we're start, we start to have issues with that, you could always put a keypad combination on our master pool that, you know, then they wouldn't even be able to get in there, right? right. If, they, if they get through the door or climb the fence or whatever into the master pool, then, you know, they wouldn't be able to get into the pool area per, per se, but we would have to have all the members have the combination to get into the pool if we had to go that route. That would be a secondary thing you might want to consider. Absolutely, yep, for sure. I'm in favor of it. I think it's a great idea. Does any uh, any board member have an objection to uh, moving ahead with uh, uh, with this? If not, uh, no, the get the ball rolling. Board is behind uh, okay. further exploration. That's great. Very good. Very good. Are there any questions for Donald? 
Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I just, I'm sorry, and it wasn't on the agenda, but I wanted to address it only because it's been an issue the last um, several days. There's been a, there's been a lot of interruption with Comcast, especially okay. in, the, in the northern part of um, the Foxfire community, and so we've been we have been um, going back and forth with them um, pretty much on a daily basis to try to figure out exactly what's happening, and. Um, just the other day, actually on Monday, one of the field techs um, actually gave me an explanation and, and that we can we can work with. And what what it is is that one of the nodes or one of the hubs that's being fed in the northern from the northern portion of the of the community, there's a there's an equipment issue that they've been trying to troubleshoot. So what they've done is they've come in the community community. And they've actually cut off um, internet and TV during the day to, to replace some of this equipment and test it. Unfortunately, they haven't given us any notice of, of these tests and this, these equipment changes. So needless to say, um, those interruptions that have been occurring um, have been uh, for the most part created by Comcast. Um, We've been in touch, as I said, with them on a daily basis, and the, our community rep Donna and Jeff are working with the outside team so we can get this resolved. But at the same time, to improve the communication so that if we know that there's going to be a tech in the area for a couple of hours on a specific day and time, we can at least notify the members and be prepared. So it's um, it's been a, a battle, especially the last couple of weeks. But um, there is a there is an equipment issue that they're trying to get resolved at this point in time, and that's why there have been a number of outages, and most of those outages are being experienced north of the clubhouse, not south of the clubhouse, and it's because of the fiber line that feeds that group of nodes. So, Donald, I had heard that it had to do with uh, you know capacity spike and that they're doing this right. And this was one of the concerns I had raised as we went through this bidding process with Comcast. So, and how they were going to monitor as people start to do a lot of streaming TV and everyone's going up on the internet. And, uh, you know, one of the things I had asked Comcast to do and what I wanted to see happen is that they did a full assessment you know, before we cut everybody over. And now we're starting to have the problems that I anticipated we were gonna have. So I think it's really important. I know that this is just on the north side, but we could potentially have this on the south side. And, you know, I think Comcast owes it to us with this, you know, three and a half million dollar contract for six years to make sure that this community has the proper bandwidth and you know Jeff promised us that we were going to have the capacity and all of this and that they monitor it and blah 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 and now we've got exactly what I expected to have happen and um, I think we've got to kind of hold them accountable because this was brought up when we were negotiating with them uh, absolutely and then um, when, when I when I spoke to Jeff uh, yesterday, I, I, I made sure that he was aware of the fact that the services that we um, were anticipating or were promised uh, haven't been what we've been we've experienced these last especially these last couple of weeks and um, he assured me that they would work through this but ultimately it appears that there's there's a I know that before they did we even went live they came in and did a lot of work on the infrastructure and the nodes and things like that. But there seems to be some failure that they can't just uh, totally pinpoint at this point in time. But uh, they are well aware that this has to be corrected and, and, and fixed for the long term. Absolutely. But that's in this area that we're having the problem. My, uh, my, my point is you probably need to have them looking at the whole infrastructure around the community because this is exactly what I was worried about. I was extremely worried about it as we were in this contract negotiation. And now that we're having failover and failure, you know, fixing one thing, we're gonna start putting Band-Aid patches around the community, which is why I was pushing for fiber optic and 
some of the things that I thought we needed to do from a technology perspective. So, um, you know, I, I think they owe it to us now that we've had this big failure and we've had the, the community down for, uh, you know, and not consistent service that, you know, maybe they do an assessment of these other areas, wherever the nodes are, and make sure that they can provide the proper throughput that we need to be able to manage the community up on the internet because the capacity has increased. I knew that capacity would go higher as soon as we got everybody on the internet and we're running TV streaming that's going to require the, the throughput in the pipes. Right, right, right. The other, the other thing while you're talking to Jeff, we're having issues with uh, community members that are trying to call in and get service from Comcast. My parents have had an issue recently. They were on the phone with Comcast for five hours and they were told they didn't have an account and they couldn't help them. And they're having issues just getting Comcast to come to, to solve a problem that they're having with one TV box. So one of the, one of the things I would do as well, it, it just as a reminder in general for everybody that if, if when you do when you do call the uh, Comcast phone number to make sure, and this is just in general that you're calling from the phone number that's associated with that specific account because that does make a big difference. And I'm not saying your parents aren't doing that. I'm just they saying don't have, they no. don't have an account. This is the problem. They have no. They're not paying any fee to Comcast because they're on the bulk agreement. There is no account. So if there's a master account that everyone needs to be provided, then that's what we need to do. But yeah, there's, there's, there's no, there's no master account. Um, there is no master account, but if, and then the second, and then the second thing I would say is, is what we've done um, obviously for the last several years. And that is if, if our members are having issues, all they've got to do is simply send us an email and then myself or Layla will reach directly out to them and have Donna or somebody else call them uh, to get things resolved. So okay, well I'll have my parents do that with you then. That's that's probably the fastest way, and that's what, that's pretty much how we've resolved most of the members' issues the last several years, and, and you know we'll continue to do that. Layla's failing several calls right now and emails and uh, for members who are just coming back, and she's done a lot of work to help facilitate. Um, the different um, installs, et cetera, et cetera. But if people are having issues and they can't get through, all they have to do is email us and we will email them directly. And then, and then Comcast will be responsible from the bulk group or Donna herself, we'll call the member directly. Okay. So it's important. To actually, call Sherry, one thing, uh, you know, concerning your parents that, that actually people might wanna be aware of is I'm in the same situation. I don't pay anything. However, uh, I do get a monthly statement from Comcast. So uh, your parents might be getting one as well. It might say zero or should say zero, which is what mine does. But at the top of that, uh, there conceivably could be a, a phone number, uh, you know, a Comcast phone number to uh, call. Uh, I find that uh, we don't get, uh, I don't get local uh, call center representation every time I've had a problem, I'm in the Philippines. So, Philippines or India, so, yeah. yeah. So, so much for a local call center situation. Well, but there is a, uh, we're supposed to call the bulk center, right? Not but just that's what they're, center. yes, that's what they're doing though, Dr. Cornetta. They're, they, they have called the bulk center and they're getting ported to the Philippines or India. So it's an experience that's happening and, and there's some challenges. I just wanted to point it out. Question to me on the on the COVID. I know Donald, you had mentioned uh, a couple of weeks ago about contacting maybe Walgreens or CVS to get them to come out here to give the flu vaccine or the COVID vaccine when it becomes available. And I also know that they don't have it right now. So, <laughs> but I just wanted to keep that at the forefront. I've gotten that question from a couple of members. Of, Could we do that? And I assured them that yes, yeah. we have thought about that and. And we, we actually, and we do have uh, calls into Walgreens directly. And, mm -hmm. and um, fortunately, Dorothy Roosevelt, who organizes the health fair now, mm -hmm. and is on the health and wellness committee, as you know, Dorothy has been following up with them to try to see if in fact there's any way we can get, you know, on. I will say that I was on an email chain last night with um, general managers from all, you know, all over Southwest Florida 
And um, they've had the same experience as we've had in, in contacting the, the Department of Health. And um, they'll take information, but they, they, they're not gonna guarantee anything. So I think that right now they don't have enough information and have a, enough uh, direction as to how can we handle these things and can we start making our own decisions? That, that's one of the challenges. But, but um, a lot of the clubs in the area, I would say most of the clubs in the area, including Fox Fires, reached out to the Department of Health as well to see if in fact, this is a way we could facilitate um, the, the vaccine on site. Good, I just wanted to get that on the record Absolutely. for anybody who's listening to let them know. We did think about that and we're pursuing that. Very good. Well, going back to uh, Comcast, uh, am I correct that they extended the free install period from the end of January to the end of March? Yes, they did, through March 31st. So if there are any members who uh, uh, have not completed the, uh, the installation of equipment, you've got till the end of March to get it done. Right. Are you, are you gonna put that out in your monthly message or your day, weekly message or whatever? You should probably let the members know. Yeah, well, I, I put a it out. Reminder. Of Sure, you know, I'll put a reminder out. Absolutely, we put it out a, probably about two months ago. I'll put it out again. Absolutely. The other, the other thing is there are going to be some unique circumstances where, um, for members who aren't going to be back to Foxfire, and we'll we'll want to make sure that they get into con direct contract with Comcast to discuss their their individual situation. Uh, any other questions for Donald? All right, Pam. Uh, Controller's report. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, currently, we are um, thirteen thousand dollars better than budget, or right at fourteen thousand dollars better than budget. Um, we had our finance committee meeting on Tuesday, um, and I reported to them we are down in our revenues about a hundred and ten thousand um, dollars between the golf shop and the restaurant, 76,000 is coming from the, the food and beverage. And the 33,000 is coming from um, the uh, pro shop. One of the things that I did say is that in the pro shop for the month of December, if you look at the um, budget where we're at compared to budget, we are down slightly just for the month. But if you look at last year, we're actually up from the prior year. So this is one of those things you kind of have to look at both the prior year and the budget. Um, but we're actually in a good, uh, right now, this is the end of our first quarter for our, our year. And um, we're, we're in good shape. All the mem all the department heads are watching the budget, taking the time and um, paying attention to what's going on. So. I didn't know if anybody had any questions or concerns that they wanted to discuss. I will take those questions. Any questions for Pat? Um, on the um, collections, the foreclosures, um, we have had one of the, uh, we did have a gentleman, if you notice that the, um, it'll, it, we have had one of the gentlemen pay in full, so that has helped our our collections. Um, we still have about seven people, but it's, it's the same people, but the one is considerably delinquent and um, we're, we're still working on that. It's just a complicated issue. So, um, is he, he's, he's living, he hasn't deceased. No, he's not deceased. Okay. Tim, Tim, what, what of the of the uh, thirty thousand dollars? How much is it for that one account, approximately? About eighteen. Okay, just 18, so everybody 000. put this and put this in perspective for everybody. But about yeah. eighteen thousand of that is from one account. Right, right. So, yeah, and then the, the other people are, you know, December obviously is the month we bill people, so. It, it automatically jumps everybody. If they're on the delinquent list, it automatically jumps everybody up um, $1,500. Because that's what the court, at least $1,500. So um, we do have capital requests from Jonathan. Um, this is just from his regular uh, request that he has. And he is looking at purchasing a tire changer. Uh, for the shop, which is right at $10,000. Um, 
and an ice machine. Do you know where that ice machine is? That for the shop itself, the ice machine. Yeah, it's for yeah, the I shop. So. Yeah, it's the. Yeah, yeah. So the ice machine is for the shop. Um, so that's for a total of thirteen thousand dollars that he's requesting. And they're replacement items. Yeah, they're both replacement items, and they're both in the budget. Right. So we well, we well is there a motion to, uh, yeah, to approve uh, $13,375 for the tire changer and ice machine? I'll move. A motion, a second? Second. Okay. Second. Any uh, discussion? All right, so all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, just as a matter of my education, if it's already in the budget, uh, why do we need to vote again on it once we approve the budget? Our, our process has always been, you know, they years ago, they established that process because what happens, especially like in a time like we're in right now, if for any reason the board felt like that, even though the items have been, been budgeted, but we felt like we needed to hold back from purchasing something, then that gives the board the opportunity to say, let's hold off on this. Is there a yes. dollar amount that triggers this? Is no, it's just, just anything that's on the budget, in the budget items. Okay. okay. Because we, you know, so currently we're in really good financial mm -hmm. situation, but you know, that cannot, that might not always be the case. Right. So. Okay, thank you. you know. Um, one of the, on the PPP, we met yesterday, the committee did, we went over all the worksheets. Um, I am in the process, as soon as this meeting is over, I will be sending those over to RSM. I had a few other things to include, um, that they're going to, that they're going to need to look at, which is like bank statements and stuff like that. So I will be sending that. Evan, to do you want to share your desktop? Yeah. So they can right. see what's going on. What? Sherry, did you have something? Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, so um, I'll be sending that over to RSM for their review. And then once it's reviewed, then the committee probably will meet again just if there's any changes to the material that we provided them. And if there's no changes, then I'll submit it to the bank. If there are changes, then we'll, we'll meet. And then um, once that's done, we'll submit it over to the bank. This is the application. This for, is the application okay. for the loan forgiveness. Yeah. So we're coming down the home stretch, which we're all happy about, right, Dr. Cornetta? <laughs> yes. The, uh, I, I specifically want to thank the members of that uh, uh, committee who uh, really worked very hard to, uh, to sort through uh, uh, the whole process. The rules keep changing, and uh, uh, I hope. Uh, We've been an assistance to Pam uh, in trying to, uh, to get this uh, drawn together, get the uh, uh, forgiveness application in and uh, be done with it. So. Yeah. Oh, I, I'd just like to make one comment on uh, uh, a great thing that, uh, that Pam did back in May of last year. Uh, we had a conversation about engaging RSM uh, it's a public accounting firm. Uh, RSM is going to be looking at these documents much as much as they would if any of us were uh, doing our personal taxes. Uh, we're going to have a fee of about twenty five hundred dollars is all. Uh, it's very mm -hmm. modest. Uh, it gives us gives all the members of, within our community uh, to the assurances that. Uh, we stayed on top of this right from the very beginning. So thanks very much to Pam for that. And I only have one other comment. Um, the audited financial statements are complete. Um, they have been mailed. So everyone um, have, will receive them in the mail probably in the next day or two. And the annual meeting information went out. So we're getting votes in already. Okay, any uh, questions for Pam? Well, thank you, Pam. Well done. Uh, under new business, uh, the construction and implementation committees. Uh, in your board book, uh, um, there is uh, a list uh, of uh, committees here, the master plan construction committee, and uh, then uh, several uh, implementation committees and the uh, 
uh, the process uh, would be that the uh, these various implementation subcommittees would uh, deal with their specific areas uh, uh, and uh, uh, information would then flow up to the uh, the master plan construction committee uh, and then ultimately to the board. Um, we have uh, uh, on page 11 of the board book uh, uh, a list of uh, people who have agreed to serve on these various committees. Um, is there a motion to uh, uh, to approve uh, this roster of, uh, of members? I shall move. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I would like to add that I feel that we're extremely lucky to have uh, members who are willing to volunteer their time and their expertise. And we have sort of an embarrassment of riches here with so much talent. Right. These are very high quality people yeah. uh, on these committees, and I thank them for their sharing their expertise with us. Uh, just a question uh, in terms of what detail will these committees be involved in the uh, projects that they're assigned to. And I also noticed that uh, we have in one group uh, a kitchen and library included. Uh, I'm not aware of that as being part of the uh, master plan. So uh, in what detail, you know, how, how detailed are they going to get in terms of either working with a contractor, working with plans, et cetera? Well, you know, these are uh, our subcommittees that are advisory. They will, uh, you know, meet, uh, uh, discuss what they want, what they need, uh, uh, and uh, they would not work directly with the contractor, but uh, they would make uh, recommendations uh, that the construction committee would then deal with. Well, my, my feeling is at whatever point is probably the right time, I would like to recommend that we uh, find a, a, an owner's rep, per se, somebody who has good knowledge within the construction area, within projects, who would actually be involved in the day-to-day -day oversight and then report back to us. And this would be a consultant. It should not be an employee. It should not be a member but it should be a, a third party uh, consultant who has the experience to be able to uh, work on a day-to-day -day basis overseeing these projects. How much do you think someone like that would cost? Uh, I don't know, I, I did it and I was very expensive. So um, obviously would have to you know, go to the market and do some uh, checking to see what the cost would be. But I think in the long run, not having somebody who's responsible for direct oversight, daily oversight, it could cost us more in the end. Well, uh, you know, we're just in the organizing phase of this. Right. That's thing that, uh, that would need to be discussed. Yeah, I mean, that might not be necessary. Well, obviously, we won't be looking at construction for probably a year plus. So there's plenty of time. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, yeah, we have a motion, we have a motion uh, uh, seconded to, uh, uh, to accept this roster. Is there any further discussion? Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. And uh, on behalf of the board, and I, I believe all members, I want to thank these uh, members who stepped forward to, uh, to accept this responsibility. And, and as uh, Tappy said, they bring a tremendous amount of uh, skill and, uh, and background uh, to help us get uh, through this uh, uh, expeditiously and efficiently. So thank you to all of them. Um, uh, the MHK contract uh, uh, is in your board book. Um, the uh, I'm looking for a motion to uh, uh, to accept this uh, uh, contract uh, and to retain MHK architects uh, for the uh, uh, the non golf course components of uh, of the master plan. 
I make a motion that we retain NHK Architects to be, to represent us for the non-golf course portion of the master plan. I second that. Is there any discussion? Yeah, actually, I had, uh, I believe last month I had raised a question with Donald uh, about looking at MHK and it being a, a sole, uh, a sole bidder per se. And I had asked about uh, trying to get some uh, competitive pricing from other architectural firms, just to make sure that, uh, you know, these numbers are, are in line. And so far, I haven't seen anything in terms of any competitive uh, alternatives or even because I believe this these are the same this is the same number as what they quoted uh, a while back uh, when we developed the initial proposal for the master plan so how, how do we know that uh, you know this isn't uh, far higher than the, the normal industry number right. what do we have to compare it to um trying to uh, to get comparison figures uh, is extremely difficult you can look at industry standards and their uh, their request uh, for uh, $235,000 is approximately 4.8% of the uh, the building cost uh, which is uh, uh, certainly uh, competitive the, those costs generally range from anywhere from 4 to 15% uh, so they certainly are at the low end. Uh, secondly, um, the, uh, Donald, do you want to uh, talk sure. about uh, sure. the uh, conversations you've had? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so yeah. So, Mr. Hauk, what I did do was <clears throat> I, I reached out to um, to Albert, uh, the architect who did the designs for the golf course maintenance building, to ask him how how he would approach this um in, in this situation and want to kind of pick his brain so one of the one of the things that um one of the things that we discussed was the fact that <clears throat> first and foremost mhk has designed this from the get-go and so even if we were to go out if we were to go out to bid then it's probably something where you're never really going to get an apples to apples comparison uh, first and foremost, because MHK knows the project and knows the, the the situation so well that ultimately, in the long run, his assessment was we would actually uh, waste uh, time and and money in doing that. He said, however, he said when, with uh, with regard to a firm like MHK to do a project like this of this magnitude, that there are very few um, companies locally that would um, really qualify for this type of work. And as an example, he said, if you came to me four years ago to help you design this, I would have told you at the time that, you know, that isn't a job that I would, my, my firm would be able to perform. He said, so with all that's considered with the amount of time that they already have into it, and if they provided a good level of service and based on the percentage of, um, what the uh, overall build out is going to be compared to that contract. He said, you're right, you're, you're, you're really right in line. Actually, you're probably um, in better shape than you would be going to somebody else. He said, um, he said also the, the, um, with, with, the, with the fact that they're local makes a big difference as well. So, and if you were happy with the services that they provide at this point in time, then it probably would make the most sense to stick with them. Incidentally, when we did the review for the engineers, we went out to do our bidding for the engineers. We actually had MHK do, do that for us. And when they did that, they didn't charge us any additional fees. They didn't nickel and dime us. Um, they got us three quality, you know, two other quality engineers. And in the correspondence, um, after I went back to the other two engineers, Grady Miner and um, uh, Barber, one of the, just to thank them for doing, the, for uh, providing a proposal and for meeting with us. Um, one of them actually, they both obviously thanked for being included in the bid process, but one of them wrote back and said, in the long run, you really did the, you did the right thing, sticking with the people that know most about the project because otherwise, you'd be going backwards. So 
Yeah, Albert's comments kind of lined up directly with um, those of of um, of, uh, uh, of Tom Barber. But in any case, uh, the long and short of it is, uh, based on Albert's professional opinion, the the MHK uh, proposal is right in line, and it's a it's the right firm for this type of a project. And I thought that that was a good uh, benchmark to compare it to. Now, who is Albert? Albert's the gentleman that we worked with on the golf course maintenance buildings. He designed both both of the buildings for um, the golf course maintenance. Albert D'Ambrose, Studio AD. Oh, oh, he's with Studio AD. Yes, yes. I would like to add that the uh, statutory changes to our documents say that uh, uh, contracts for an attorney, accountant, architect, community association are not subject to competitive bidding requirements. Right, that's also in the Florida statutes. That's, yeah. Um, okay, is there any further discussion? Uh, on the motion to uh, uh, contract with MHK for both this, yeah, one one thing I forgot to mention, both the strategic planning committee and the finance committee fully support this engagement as well. Yeah, I, I, I just for the record, I'll say that when any purchaser of professional services, whether they be architectural or legal or accounting, whatever. Uh, is satisfied with the services being rendered and generally satisfied with the price, I think it behooves that purchaser to stay with those professionals because you develop a rapport and an understanding between each other of exactly what you want, what you need, what your goals are. And therefore, as long as we have been happy with MHK and they've done a good job for us, and this price is in the ballpark with anybody else, it makes eminent and, and we don't have to take the time to find two other vendors, even if we wanted to. Uh, I think it makes eminent good sense to stay with the professional that we know and trust and has done good work for us in the past. So that's why I'm going to vote in favor of it. Well, MHK has been involved at least for the last four years. Yes. Uh, is it longer than that? Yeah, it's four, it's four years. So, you know, they certainly have an intimate knowledge of uh, Foxfire and, and what we are trying to accomplish. So on the motion to uh, uh, go ahead with the MHK contract for architectural services, is there any further discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? It's unanimous. Okay. Uh, a couple other items of new business I just wanted to mention briefly. Uh, the, the Rules Committee under Chris Jackstad has been looking into uh, um, rental contracts uh, uh, shorter than 30 days. And uh, um, they've uh, done a lot of investigating and have found a number of uh, uh, renters uh, uh, who advertise on VBRO or uh, Airbnb uh, for weekends all the way up to, uh, you know, uh, two or three weeks. So uh, he has contacted them and made them aware of the fact that uh, they are violating our uh, uh, governing documents. Uh, and uh, he is following up uh, on that as well. Just to clarify, he has contacted the owners, correct? The owners, okay. right. And or the or the rental agent. Okay. Um, and uh, I asked uh, Jim Moore and and uh, Chris Jackson uh, to look uh, begin the process of looking into uh, uh, electronic voting um, uh, with the, the idea that uh, we would hope to have. Uh, have it in place, organized, and the members understanding it uh, uh, by the uh, election cycle a year from now, um, if possible, uh, and if, uh, if it's their recommendation that we move in that direction. I can tell you just by for point of information, we've already begun the process. We've talked to two vendors, have a call to return to a third vendor, and whenever we decide, we'll give you a complete rundown of the costs and the pros and the cons of each one but it appears that the lead time you need to initiate this 
program is probably a month or less. Mm -hmm. So we would be ready to go at, at any reasonable time, you know, certainly well before the two, 2022 election cycle. Good. Great. Okay. Uh, is there any old business anyone wants to uh, bring up? If not, then we'll move on to the standing committees. Uh, uh, are there any uh, committee liaisons who wish to make a report? Well, the Green Committee, I think, uh, probably need to get up to date on what's going on with that. And um, as expected, since the master plan was approved, they and Donald and Jonathan have been moving forward with vendors. Um, everything seemed to be in place. The uh, prices that were quoted to us were honored. And um, we're, Jonathan is planning to start uh, killing the grass on the new nine at the end of February. So that course will still be playable for some time um, while the grass is dying. Um, and uh, at Donald's suggestion, the grass killer will be put on in the afternoons. The course will be closed to minimize exposure to members. Um, and of course, members will be notified when that's going to be happening. So uh, we are underway. Uh, Tappy? Yes. What, what, will be, what will be used to kill the grass? Roundup. Roundup. <laughs> okay. <Yep. laughs> That's why we're doing it in the afternoon <laughs> and notifying members, yes. So no members are playing on it after they apply it. Right. Uh, say again? No members so will. No members are playing while no. they apply it. Right, yes, and uh, until it dries. Okay, because obviously, you know, there are a lot of things going on concerning Roundup. I watch TV. Yes. <laughs> and read the internet. That's the official thing. All right. Yeah. yeah. Everything's true on the internet. Yeah. And TV. And TV. Okay. We are aware of the other risks. Uh, any other committee reports? Well, I, I can. can... Oh, go ahead, Roger. Roger, why don't you uh, go? I'm just going to uh, comment about uh, the nominating committee. Uh, just so uh, so we're all aware of this, we had uh, the Meet the Candidates session on November or on January 11th uh, this past Monday. We had 134 uh, members that pre-registered to uh, to view that particular piece. Uh, 102 uh, were able to uh, to get in and, uh, and and stay with the program. Uh, we consistently had 90 different members who stayed with uh, the one hour session that, uh, that took place. Uh, we have uh, three outstanding candidates uh, that, uh, that are uh, running for the, uh, for the two positions this year. Uh, the nominating committee is working diligently to support them any way we can. Uh, the ballots have already been sent out as Donald has, uh, has already said. Uh, we are going to, in an effort to help these three candidates and also to help all of the community, uh, the nominating committee is has set up a second uh, virtual session, which will take place January 11th. Uh, it's going to be referenced as the Indeed. ask the candidate uh, questions, and this gives members an opportunity to submit questions uh, that uh, that the nominating committee will uh, take a look at uh, over the course of the next couple of days. Uh, filter them. Uh, so if there's like-minded questions, we make certain that those are asked of the, uh, of the three candidates. Uh, we're working towards uh, safety first and foremost with this, just as we did on the 11th. Uh, the only people that who are, who are in the dining room are the three candidates, uh, the five nominating committee members, uh, we will have one person from uh, operations that, uh, that were there this past week. It was Pam Cannon and then Kathy O'Brien, who what I uh, feel I should be uh, thanking her every single week. Kathy drives the, uh, the overall uh, uh, program and keeps people uh, on, their, on their feet. So that's where the nominating committee is, one to help uh, these three candidates get the exposure that's a little bit difficult for them to get at this particular point in time, and two, to help members uh, develop uh, their informed opinions that, uh, that they want to have. 
Thank you, Roger. Uh, Jim? Yeah, I have, I wanted to report to the board that we had our first uh, Foxfire Legacy Fund Committee meeting yesterday. Um, we had, uh, at the last meeting, we approved the slate of six members. There's one more because the charter requires seven members. Uh, and that's Kathleen Brem, B-R-E-H-M. She did attend that first meeting. Uh, it was a, a terrific meeting. It was enthusiastic, lots of ideas, lots of the eagerness to get going on this. Our next meeting will be about a month from now. Um, and the first one yesterday was mostly a get acquainted meeting. Uh, I'm encouraging several people to consider being the chairman of the committee. Uh, one, one of our members already volunteered to be the secretary to the committee uh, and lots and lots of good ideas. And, and I'm, I'm very optimistic that we've got a, a terrific bunch and we'll, we'll see some significant progress in the months ahead. I would like to ask this board to approve the addition of that one uh, other member who volunteered since our last meeting. Her name is Kathleen Brem, B-R-E-H-M. So I would move that she be approved as a member of the Legacy Fund Committee. I move that Kathy Brown be approved. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, I also uh, wanted to bring up the ARC at this point. Go ahead, John. Um, had a small meeting, a short meeting with uh, Mike Gavigan and uh, Keith Bailey uh, the other day. And uh, Mike brought up uh, what he uh, is looking at for members of the committee, uh, which uh, is indicated, well, the names aren't indicated uh, on the uh, sheet here, but I have the names and these are the names that they are looking for, Mike is looking for to be included in the committee. And they are Keith Bailey, Ali Gallagher, Franz Zuckelbauer, Richard Hode, uh, Mike Cotter, uh, Skip Walsh, and Ken Bills. Now, the, the two new uh, people uh, would be Keith, who actually uh, would need an exemption because he's on the legacy committee. So that would make two committees for him. And then Ken Bills is, is new. I guess he was on the committee a few years ago, but he wants to come back on. Uh, he is on the uh, Rules Committee, and he told me that he would be submitting his resignation from the Rules Committee. So those are the people uh, that we are looking at to be on the ARC. So I wanted to uh, get a motion to approve these uh, members to be uh, on the uh, committee. Is there a motion to accept the, uh, the roster that John just went through? I will move to accept those members uh, of the ARC as proposed and also to grant an exemption, exemption to Keith Bailey to allow the serve on the committee. Is there Allie Gallagher? Allie Gallagher as well. Allie Gallagher, excuse me. She's yeah, she was already granted one last month. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, I second that. Oh, there's a motion which has been seconded. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and I want to thank uh, all of those members. Uh, um, John, would you uh, characterize uh, uh, being on the uh, ARC as slightly thankless? <laughs> <laughs> Well, they just figure they're doing their job. <laughs> well, we, uh, we, we appreciate the job they do. We do. Uh, okay, uh, the Memorial Fund. Uh, yes. You want to speak for that? So one of the, so we're we're organizing a, a meeting, uh, but one of the, one of the th one of the requests that's come our way was to uh, get some, buy some additional heaters. Um, and picnic tables for the outdoor seating because we're moving more and more toward uh, that for the for the short term. The heaters will be able to use you know in the future as well. The uh, picnic tables, once our renovations are done, we would be able to use for golf course maintenance. So uh, we are going to have a meeting probably early next week. I'm going to talk to Mr. McClay, um, but we're looking at spending approximately five thousand dollars to buy those heaters and outdoor and picnic tables. 
and that's going to be request in front of the memorial committee. Just want to make sure that the board is okay with that. <clears throat> Where did you say the heaters would be used? We use outdoors. We could still yeah. use them after the. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Picnic tables. You said would go to golf course we would, maintenance. Yeah, right now, we'd use them for the outdoor dining, so yeah. we can spread people out even more. Okay. But that, then down the road, we would be able to use them for golf course maintenance. Okay. Yeah. Is there any way we could buy picnic tables that? We could use or does golf course maintenance need those? Uh, the ones right now, what the, the, what we're looking at is a is a, a really just for easy cleanup, easy clean, okay. and, and what's available out there right now. The supply chain is not great right now. There's a few. There's only a few vendors, so um, the ones we would use would probably be mainly used on the grass blotchy area for for the for the season. Right. So these would be like collapsible. Yeah, plastic, kind you know, plastic. plastic yeah, exactly, exactly. That we really wouldn't want. To you wouldn't want them as a permanent solution, no, yeah. no, no. But but a temporary, but a temporary solution that we has a hard surface that we can keep clean. Mm -hmm. And the heaters are those freestanding. Freestanding with with the, with the propane with the cone on the top. Okay. I'm I'm uh, absolutely in favor and get of getting some heaters. Uh, there's going to be greater participation in outdoor dining. As Donald said, there's 90% of our people are eating outdoors. Um, it, I, I'm asking a question though in this, is there any way that we can not, that the board can get out of the way of slowing down if the Memorial Committee says we want to go spend $5,000 uh, in their next meeting let let them do this. Uh, our average uh, high temperatures in February are 75, 76, 77 degrees. Uh, uh, the low temperatures are uh, 60 degrees. Uh, if we buy these things in, uh, I don't know, the month of uh, April, <laughs> we're, we're not going to get our value out of them this year. I, I, let's, if Memorial C Committee meets next week, let them buy them. Right. Is that that's, acceptable or? That's what we want to do. That's yeah. exactly what we like to do. Okay, good. Yeah. I do like the idea of it coming before the board though. Yeah, that's. I wouldn't want the memorial fund to go out. And no, that's the money. process. The process okay. is to make sure the board's on board with them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so the, the sense of the board is that uh, we should uh, proceed, right? Yes. And we currently have about $45,000 in the memorial mm -hmm. fund. Oh, right. So. Let's buy more heaters. Yeah. <laughs> the problem, we don't have any place to store them. <laughs> uh, are there any other committee reports? Uh, if not, uh, we have uh, correspondence from uh, member Gwen Jocelyn, which is in the board book, and a letter from the Greater Naples Fire Foundation thanking Foxfire for uh, their contributions to the uh, toy drive. Um, are there any members uh, who are uh, on the, uh, on the Zoom call here who wish to exercise the right to speak? At this point, there are no questions and no raised hands. Okay, there are none. Um, the uh, annual meeting is Saturday, February 13th at 8.30 a.m. Uh, this will be a Zoom meeting. Uh, and uh, that would be uh, followed uh, uh, the Monday after the annual meeting, uh, the board will have an organizational meeting and our next regular board meeting is Friday, February 19th. Uh, there any other uh, business uh, any member wishes to bring up? Uh, I, I would like to, uh, to just point out that uh, uh, this is uh, Sherry's last regular board meeting and uh, uh, three years ago, uh, Sherry and I uh, were elected together uh, uh, to the board, and I wanted to uh, uh, thank Sherry for uh, for the work she's put in over the last uh, three years. Uh, it's been a pleasure to serve with you, Sherry, uh, and uh, you had many accomplishments. Uh, you were an important contributor to the ad hoc committee on the revitalization initiative that uh, that really set us on the course uh, to get the uh, the master plan that was recently approved uh, you were an important force behind uh, 
the landscape subcommittee of the green committee, which uh, has resulted in, um, in really uh, remarkable improvements uh, on the golf course. And uh, of course you, you are an important voice in the uh, uh, Comcast contract. So, uh, you know, on behalf of myself, I believe the board and, uh, and certainly the members of Flexfire, thank you for all you've done for the last three years. Thank You're you. here. Thank you. Thank you. Here, here, Sherry. <laughs> if there's no other business, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Any opposed? It's a record. We're done. <laughs>